site look at all familiar to you? I've really, really let my office space go lately. Bad organisation, being far too busy with work, but also just being more focused on the work itself and not my environment. And that's all contributed to this current state. This has to change. I mean, even my desk, the space that I use the most, is poorly organised and messy. But fortunately, I do have a plan. By spending just a little bit of money and putting that with some clever planning, I think I've now got an idea how to kick this space back into order. And you might already be noticing a difference in this face shot, I hope so. But why does that actually matter? It's just space, right? Well, kinda. I mean, obviously in my position, I want it to look nice on YouTube. Of course I do. But that's only part of the problem. Because I believe the tidiness and organization of your space can actually have a really huge impact on your motivation and your ability to work to, well, the best of your ability. And well, since motivation and concentration are two things that I really struggle with, it might just be time to act. And maybe it's time for you to act too. So we're gonna rewind a couple of days now and I'm gonna show you me and Jenny getting this space cleared out and ready for our plan to go into action. So there are a few restrictions to this space, such as where PowerPoints are, the fact that there's a whole ass wardrobe bolted to the wall that we can't remove. So my focus here is really just gonna be on optimizing what I can actually change. And I think that's the important first part here. Figure out what you can actually fix. I wanna come up with storage and display solutions that are actually just a bit more manageable. I wanna make the desk space feel as usable as possible. And really, I wanna decorate a little just so that it feels nice when I'm working in here. Clearing out was a pretty full on chore itself. We chose one of the hottest weekends of the year so far and it's the height of British summer. But with quite a bit of help from Jen, it wasn't the end of the world. It's important though, I think, that when you start a project like this, you do so from as much of a blank slate as possible. I get that you might not be as lucky as I am to have such a huge hobby space or even a dedicated hobby space, but regardless of if it's a desk in the corner or a full dedicated space like mine, I still think it's worth just stepping back as far as possible before you start to rebuild that space. With the space cleared out, our first mission was related to decoration. I want the wall behind me when I'm talking to the camera to look nicer. Hopefully it did at the start of the shot and you like it. Maybe give the video a thumbs up if you did. But that wall also happens to be the wall I face when I'm working. So all in all, I feel like it could actually help a ton with making the space feel more mine as well. I found these awesome black brick self-adhesive wall vinyls on Timu recently, and I decided to order a bunch. They were super cheap, costing less than 30 quid for 10 packs, which is enough to cover that back wall and still have spare if I want to go further. A quick clean down of the wall was all that was needed before they could start to be fitted up, and there's not really much in the way of additional equipment or skill needed here. You'll have cleaning products around the house, and they're self-adhesive, so... It's really just like putting up giant stickers. You just have to concentrate a little on lining up the pattern and making sure that it stays consistent and you'll get something that looks good. And with these up, I'm already seeing a really nice improvement. I'm very, very happy with that. So wall covering and general decoration was definitely a really good place to start. It's a pretty simple way that I could make a massive impact on what's visible, what's going on, what the feeling is like around me. But next up, I want to think more about the desk layout and about just making that make a bit more sense. For example, in this corner of the room, I have these built-in shelves in the alcove. I was using them to display my painted minis, but that really doesn't make any sense. It's the darkest corner of the room, and when my computer was jammed in there too, it was even darker still. Instead, I'm actually gonna use this as my storage shelves for work in progress and commissions. You see, I already have this industrial racking that I currently use for work in progress and commissions, but if I place this somewhere where it's getting a bit more sun, 
In fact, even leaving it where it is, it gets a fair bit of sun. I can basically just swap the function of these two shelves and they'll both do a way better job of what they're trying to do now. Simple things like considering the function of your space like this can really help make it more livable. And it doesn't cost anything to just move stuff around. So I'm gonna start getting these shelves filled up with commissions and whips, and I'm also gonna move my painting desk into this corner, I think. That way I can counteract how dim the corner is with my bright painting light. I think if I put my airbrush there, that's gonna make the most sense. Speaking of painting lights, by the way, this is another recent upgrade, a Lumi desk lamp from the Daylight Company. These lights are insane and they're well worth the investment. I'll pop a link to them in the description and you can check them out for yourself. So with that decision made on the position of my painting desk, that also decided the rest of my working layout for me. So airbrush was on the far left, painting desk in the middle, and that means computer is going on the right. Now that's all well and good, but it didn't really solve the biggest issue I was having, which was all the bloody clutter on the desks. However, for that, I was rescued slightly by this video's sponsor, War Cradle Studios. As well as making the wonderful Wild West Exodus and Dystopian Wars miniatures games, War Cradle also happened to specialize in laser cut MDF products. Aside from the vast array of awesome scenery on offer, they make these really handy units of drawers and paint racks. The classic IKEA pegboards that a lot of us have felt like a really good idea when I first got them. But the reality is that the peg on shelves just don't actually hold that much. They don't have a great capacity. The bins have a terrible habit of rattling out of place and then causing the pots to fall down. I've spilt a lot of flock this way. And the pots just kind of get really disorganized really quickly. Whereas these drawer and rack arrangements are gonna let me store tools and the like out of view, reducing that visual clutter. They'll also keep my paints organized nicely because they have a paint rack on top of them instead of the mess I had before from them being all out on my desk. They arrive flat pack, but building them is super easy. Just a little wood glue or PVA or even a tack of super glue here and there will fix them together. They can actually also be painted if you want. That way you can have them match your space. I think my plan is gonna to be to put labels on them, but before I do that, I need to decide if I wanna paint them or not first. So I'm just gonna to have to learn what I've put where for now. But for now, I just wanna get them in place. I wanna get all my stuff in them so that I can feel that serotonin kick from having a more organized workspace. I cannot thank War Cradle enough for sponsoring this video and sending these racks. It's such a huge level up to my workspace and they're super affordable. So it's really hard for me to not recommend them. Again, there will be a link below so you can check these out for yourself. Supporting sponsors encourages them to support me, which enables me to keep making videos, so please do give them a look. Now, after all that drama, I wanted to work on something that was just a bit more chilled, I could take my time with. So we spent a bit of time now just organizing the off-camera areas, my 3D printing setup, my display shelves, and some of my deep storage where I put things like packing materials that you never need to see. This takes a little while because it involves a lot of decisions around where stuff is best utilized, but in the end, we get a good result. It's certainly still less presentable than the part that you see in videos, and that's fine because most importantly, it's much more organized. I now know where stuff is without having to think about it too much. And then the final step in our mission to jazz up the space a little is just to add some more decorative stuff to the area. LEDs at the back of the desk make me look like the gamer queen I always dreamed of being. Some pictures of cats and a neon infinity symbol bring a bit of my personality to the area without cluttering it up. And a nice custom desk mat from Patriot Games rounds off the little touches of me that will make the place more of a joy to live in. So here we are, and I hope you can tell that it's a pretty drastic change. But really, more than anything, this space just makes so much more sense now. It's laid out in a way that it's designed to be worked in. I will say though, I think to really hit home just how swanky it is in here now, comparatively, we're gonna need to do a before and after. So here's that.
not only does this room reflect who I am now way more than it did before, but the quality of life improvements just make it so much nicer to work in. I've been finding for a few weeks now that my motivation is lacking and my concentration is starting to ebb. Well, that's not the case anymore. I woke up this morning just dying to get in here to work and that definitely could translate to your hobby space at home. Because the thing is, the real value of unfucking your space like this is that it's a treat to yourself and you deserve that. You work hard and your hobby time is supposed to be a release. In my case, there may be slightly different motivations, but for you, it's important to maintain your hobby space. So I hope that if nothing else, this video just gives you a few ideas maybe of little things that you can do to tart up your hobby space. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider giving it a like and subscribe. As I say, that encourages the algorithm, which gets more people to see it, which makes the sponsor happier, which in turn means that at no cost to you, you enable me to keep making these videos. And that really does mean the world. If you really wanna support the channel more, you can also check the links below to my Patreon and stuff like that, where there's ways that you can directly support me from as little as one pound a month. But I think it's probably time for me to get out of here now. So. Thanks for watching folks, and until the next one, bye bye for now.